is so desperate why yeah this is um this is an interesting one i don't really understand what the deal was with this right so as i'm sure most of you are aware or those of you are um, mixed men mixed martial arts and mixed mental arts all the time mixed martial arts fans or fans of the ufc you know that the much the longer wait it could be and Tony Ferguson fight was meant to happen in a couple of weeks. But judging by what's going on at the moment, it's probably going to get cancelled or get postponed. Now, most sports around the world, NBA, basketball, NHL, NFL, uh, soccer, football, whatever we call it, cricket, even the F1, which, you know, they're kind of dragging their feet about it. Most of the, you know, the big kind of ticket uh, sports out there have paused their season or they're kind of reviewing it. And kind of hoping that things get better. I think the only one that's kind of outright cancelled has been the National Football League here in the UK and maybe the Women's League. I think that's about it. Everything else is sort of like postponed and s- until, you know, they kind of see what's happening. I think the Olympics have been postponed until next year. So has the Euros. Um, but nothing's been outright cancelled or voided, right? But everyone's sort of like, you know, pausing things for them for the time being. But the UFC isn't, right? The UFC is super desperate to make sure the UFC 259, 249 happens with a Khabib and Tony Ferguson headlining because, of course, you know, there's been four other occasions where this fight is due to happen and due to people missing weight or getting injured or whatever it may be, the fight hasn't happened, right? So I can understand the law of getting it, of putting it on because, you know, Ferg- Tony Ferguson and Khabib, we all know it's going to be an amazing fight. Tony Ferguson probably represents the only credible threat at the moment of the roster of, or the roster of people that are available. He probably he represents probably Khabib's diff- most... It, most difficult fight right he's probably his most toughest opponent and from what you heard from Khabib he's taking him very seriously but Dana White has gone on this crusade which I don't really know what why he's do why he's kind of adopting this kind of siege mentality we're going to get the job done thing and prove the haters wrong because this isn't like an issue where the commissions the commissioners or the local authorities are unwilling to give UFC a license to brand this event because they think it's a barbaric sport it's not because some governors kind of stuck their nose in and sort of like sully our reputation as you know as a fan base it's because of a cataclysmic event right that we could never have foreseen has has kind of impacted all of our lives and we're all kind of having to maneuver and adjust to the situation but then White seems incapable of a kind of understanding that and he seems to be I don't know who he's fighting against. I don't know who he's trying to prove wrong, but somehow he wants to kind of make this fight happen under any circumstances. And the thing problem I have with it is number one, obviously, it represents a level of desperation that's pretty, you know, sad to see because somebody at his level, from what he's achieved and where the UFC is at, at the moment, you know, every time I hear him speak, he tries to, he always kind of reiterates the need to kind of legitimize the UFC, right, and have it not really fought as as these barbarians fighting in a cage, but as you see it as a sport see it as something that kids can actually pursue as a career path um see it as a kind of an intellectual pursuit in some regards as well due to the commentary and the analysis of people that are involved in it so you get the feeling that there is a there is a kind of need to kind of distance themselves from the kind of the old the old days right but when he acts like this you can't help but think that the only reason why he gets the he's allowed to talk the way he talks and carry the way he carries on because he's president of the ufc no one else will be able to do the same thing that he is able to be do he's a, he's been able to do because he's essentially kind of um laid the groundwork of how somebody should act in that position which isn't necessarily how they should act but he sort of kind of made people come become accustomed to it right so much so that you hear people on the mma subreddit say oh he's our goof right he's our goof we love him which you know you can you can love who you want to love but i just don't think he represents he is like it's very professional way to represent the things and then secondly is it a, is it is it a greed thing are they trying to put this fight on under any circumstances because um, they've paid out on it or they've kind of cashed in the checks that they would have received from sponsors and if they cancel it or they postpone it, it's probably going to cost them more than trying to figure out a way to put it on? Is it is it that? Or is he just desperate to get some pay-per-view money in because if he doesn't get that in, the company's completely going to fold? I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem like this is a great way to go about things. And it must be more that's happening behind the scenes i'm not aware of but from the outside looking in it just makes dana white look like an absolute spanner and it makes it and it and it kind of reinforces the idea in my opinion that in order for ufc to really progress and go to the next level they need to find a different president they need to like he's definitely taking it as far as he's taking it now and you could definitely you know write and hold you can make a whole documentary about where he's taking the ufc from and where it's at, at the moment 
but in order for it to kind of really go to the next level it needs clear minded um you know long game uh so i don't know kind of like you know chill people to kind of lead it so it's not this i don't know fly by the seat of your pants sort of approach to it and not num there's no better example than this article here from the mma fighting that says dana white on ufc 249 i said this fight is going going on and it will right so this article from ufc says the following um with uh, the UFC 249 main event jeopardy, but then anyway, it's determined uh, that the show must go on. With the UFC lightweight champion Kevin Lovelock and the Medov stuck in Russia due to travel ban because of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, his fight against Tony Ferguson may not happen on April 18th as scheduled. The UFC has already tapped uh, Justin Gaethje as a potential replacement, which is nuts in it because they essentially put all these fighters' health at risk. They are always going to argue and tell you that oh they have the best doctors and never had any sort of in, any deaths at them in the cage and blah 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 blah, but you are just kind of setting yourself up for failure, especially with people that surround the UFC, the light guys, the the, the people that are going to be working, the medical team, the people that do all the catering. You're just going to put and again maybe if they do the approach that the soccer teams are trying to think of, where they kind of put everyone into like it's called like a World Cup Olympics village sort of place that can maybe work right ahead of it. But you'll have to do it now, right? Because if the fights happen in the 18th, you need 14 days to clear the quarantine. So it'll have to happen by Wednesday, the latest. They'll go to the venue and just stay there until the fight happens and then stay another 14 days and then leave, I assume, right? Um, but just not the right way to kind of go about um, training for a fight, I'd imagine, for the fighters involved in it. Um, he says already tapped Justin Gaethje's potential replacement to face uh, Ferguson on short notice, but nothing has been signed yet. Regardless of the Makamedov's uh, participation, um, Gaethje stepping up to take Ferguson, the UFC president promises that he's still going to put on a show in less than three weeks' time. The challenges are every is that either every time I get something figured out, he said, I wake up the next day and the world has completely changed again. Um, everything that I worked hard on the day before, me and my crew has now fallen apart. It literally just happened to us again today. I woke up today and Khabib is stuck in Russia. They just shut down all the travel in and out of Russia. But again, lack of preparation. If you knew you needed him in, you should have flew him into the place. I don't know, whatever. I woke up this morning and the whole fucking world changed again. So back to the drawing board. And we're figuring this right out now that we're speaking about it right now. As we're speaking about it right now. I have people working on this thing as we speak. Listen, I'm absolutely fucking relentless. And I said this fight is going on and it will. I just don't understand the rel the relentless nature of this. Like, why does this need to happen now? We've waited long enough. We can we're happy to wait another six months, a year to have this fight. Let the guys chill, rest, get recuperated, spend time with their families, and then once everything is settled down, put the fight back on again, and everyone will be happy to do it. But it, it, it begs the question: like, even if he does put this on, what is he going to charge people pay per view for a fight happening in three weeks? With no people in the arena, is that what he's really gonna do? Is he gonna justify? How's he gonna justify charging people a, a tick a pay per view, uh, pay per view price for that? Like, would you pay fifty dollars to see Khabib, see Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje? Not really, would you? Maybe could be Ferguson. You could probably have them fighting in a car in a in a in a in a, in a what you call it in a car park somewhere and stream it on a webcam, and people will probably pay that amount sixty dollars or hundred dollars, whatever maybe, but. Ferguson and Gaethje not really the card isn't that impressive to kind of make you want to do that anyway I, I don't really understand it man I don't get it but anyway it says here um, the biggest concern facing White right now is finding a main event that could come close to replacing the highly anticipated showdown between Khabib and Ferguson he's also taking considerable criticism for planning to promote the card um, with almost the entire world on shutdown despite any reservation about the health and safety of the staff a closed door event. White says nobody involved understands the potential risk and wants to move forward. To you. So, okay, what's the risk? He says here. We got overboard everything. He says all the time. Think about this. In the twenty year history that I've been involved and before me, there's never been a death or serious injury. That's crazy. Chilean can't say that. We got completely overboard with health and safety, even before the coronavirus. The health and safety part is still nothing new for us. It's now just trying to be able to maneuver as the world continues to freak out. And lose their mind over this corona stuff <laughs> the world is not freaking out and losing their mind over some corona stuff it's an actual thing that people are dying from this guy's insane all my fighters want to fight my staff wants to work everybody who's involved in what i'm doing is absolutely willing and able to do this of course they are because if they say no you're gonna probably fire them in it uh, the thing is with fighters when they are with me they're getting the best medical attention they could possibly get 
because they were home alone by themselves or whatever the situation is i've reached out to everybody not just my employees that work for me but my fighters too if them or a loved one can becomes ill and needs me i'm here i'll do everything in my power to help and take care of them oh look dana white jesus christ right they've given always um the fight will go on i just don't understand what the need is for it man i just don't understand it it's a weird desperation there probably is other things at play here maybe he's involved in the mob or something i don't know but not my business but definitely um i don't know who's gonna watch it on the 18th i'm probably not gonna pay the pay-per-view amount to watch it myself personally i'll just catch the clips online later but it's a sad state of offense of affairs i would have hoped they would have just postponed it and put you know put the fire on for another time people will be happy to wait i know i'll be happy to wait anyway but instead he's kind of plowing through his things that just don't make sense but anyway what can you do